Members of the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 12th of December 2017. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide, direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present remain standing in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you members, thank you ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Members, welcome to the uh, City of Adelaide Council Chamber meeting of Tuesday the 12th of December 2017. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the gallery, welcome. Uh, members, I'll take you straight to number five in your agenda. Apologies and leave of absence. I understand that we've got a full complement of members this evening, so we will continue. The item six on your agenda, members, is confirmation of minutes from two meetings. The first held on the 28th of November 2017, the second held on the 5th of December 2017. Moved by Councillor Abia. Do I have a second to Councillor Slama? Members, any queries or questions regarding those minutes? You got a question, Councillor Corbell? Lord Mayor, um, uh, it has been brought to my attention that item 13.1, the administration comment to that, which was domestic violence memorial, um, the spirit of women have identified um, some inaccuracies in the administration comment, which they've asked me to put forward as um, recommended changes. And I'm not exactly sure what the process is for that. I'll take advice from our CEO, CEO Councillor Corbell Moore. See you. It's through you, Lord Mayor. If you'd like to present those changes to me, I can ensure that change is made. Thank you. Thank you. I will do that. Um, I'll bring them to you now. Lord Mayor, can we defer the adoption of those minutes for those changes to occur at a later stage and come back, or must they be adopted now? Uh, Councillor, I think we can adopt those minutes subject to the changes which the CEO has been given. CEO, are you happy to proceed in that matter? Yeah, three of them. We can adopt them as amended, perhaps. Can I just ask you a question about that motion? If they are actually the minutes of the meeting, then I don't think we can uh, amend them. We can perhaps note that there was some inaccuracy, but I don't think we can amend minutes that accurately reflected what was presented to us on the day. Members, what I will do, um, CEO, is that pertaining to the meeting on the 28th of the 11th or the meeting on the 5th of the 12th? 
28th the 11th? Okay, so members, what I might do then is that if we moved to adopt the minutes of the meeting held on the 5th of December 2017, because I don't seem to have any queries about those minutes, CEO and members, with your blessing, if we then bring the amended minutes back for you to endorse at the next meeting of council, which in all probability will be tomorrow night, we can then deal with that matter. 31st of January. Thank you, CEO. So, members, we could do it that way. Yep, that's fine. I have come with that. Take come for that, Councillor Corbell. Okay, Councillor Councillor Corbell Moore. Um, so, members, what I'll do is I'll put before you, Councillor Raviard, Can you please move in a? Uh, uh, sorry, Jim. Okay, Councillor, we can vary your motion to just remove the date of the 28th, the 11th, 2017, which means you'll be moving a motion to adopt the minutes from the 5th of December. I'm happy with that. Okay. And your seconder was Councillor Slama. You're happy with that variation, Councillor? Thank you. So members, I now put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? So we're going to carry the minutes from the meeting of the 5th of the 12th, and the minutes as varied uh, for the meeting on the 28th, the 11th, will come back to you, members, in late January. Uh, members, item seven on your agenda is the uh, public forum and deputations. We do have one deputation uh, which we'll have this evening, which is a deputation from the dual chair of the Reconciliation Committee, which is Auntie Yvonne Agius, which talks to item nine on your agendas. Members, is Auntie Yvonne with us this evening? Auntie, welcome to the Council Chamber. And the councillors can afford you five minutes for your deputation. Welcome and nice to see you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. My name is Yvonne Agus, and I am dual chair along with the Honour Lord Mayor on the Reconciliation Committee. I'm here to commend to you the extensive community engagement that has taken place over the last three months to help us gather information to build a new City of Adelaide Stretch Reconciliation Action Plan. Reconciliation Australia Action Plan Program provides a framework for organisations to realise their vision for reconciliation and enables organisations to commit to practical actions that build respectful relationships and create opportunities with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. The RAP program promotes organisational understanding, meaningful engagement, increases equality, develops sustainable employment and business opportunities. Council works very closely with peak bodies of cultural authority, in particular the Ghana Nation Cultural Heritage Committee and the Gerda, Ghana Yurta Aboriginal Corporation. Together in collaboration, we have achieved many wonderful initiatives with positive outcomes, educating and raising awareness of Aboriginal people's life of the city. Our business, our stories, our connections, but there is always more to be done to build our strength in this space. Since September 2017, the Reconciliation Committee, the Manager of the Participation and Inclusion, Cara Maida, and the Reconciliation Officer, Nicole Gollan, have been working to build a new stretch wrap to guide us from 2018 to 2021. I'd like to speak to you tonight about three months long community engagement process that the Reconciliation Committee has guided since September this year. City of Adelaide has undertaken extensive consultation, three workshops with approximately 60 staff, council staff, a day long workshop with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community members and an online invitation to a wider community on your say of Adelaide. I'd like to particularly reflect on the City's Adelaide staff consultation as this was the first time practice within the organisation. Team leaders and managers across the corporation attended workshops with Nicole where they came up with ideas and opportunities in their business area across the council business. Two weeks ago we invited Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community members to discuss what they saw as an important element and opportunities that should be included in the new Streets RAP program. I asked David Rathman to host the day long workshop and those that were present participated actively to discussions and generated many ideas for us to consider. I'd like to extend my particular thanks to the Lord Mayor who attended 
and listen to and what has some come out with some really good ideas. Lastly, in November, Council invited input from wider community through its online community engagement site, Your Say Adelaide, so that if anyone else had anything to contribute, they could. We really have provided many opportunities to, to people to come not to contribute in this process, sorry. You will see in the report later in tonight's meeting agenda that we have provided a list of community engagement responses. Nicole and Caro are working to identify the, the themes that are beginning to emerge from these. And if you agree, they will now prepare a draft. Reconciliation Action Plan 2018-2021 for us to consider early next year. I know that information about this process and the invitation to participate was extended to you all a few months ago through the e-news. From Sean, but there is still plenty of time for you to let Nicole and Caro hear of any ideas that you may have to incorporate in the draft. In conclusion, council members should feel confident that we have engaged widely. You will be able to see use the result of this extensive community engagement process to make informed decisions about the ways in which Adelaide City Council will approach our reconciliation activity. Moving forward, including the contents of the new stretch wrap for 2018 and 2021. Thank you for your time and your support of Council's to Reconciliation Committee. And thank you for your continued support. On behalf of the Reconciliation Committee, we wish to wish you and your families a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Auntie Yvonne, thank you for your deputation. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for your co-chairing of the Reconciliation Committee. Members, I'm going to take you on. We don't have any further deputations this evening and nor do we have any petitions, which is item eight on your agenda. So I'm going to take you directly to item nine, which is reports from other committees. And this in fact is the report, the recommendation on page four of your papers from the Adelaide City Council Reconciliation Committee. Uh, members, we have a uh, report to note. Do I have a mover, please? Councillor Rabia, seconded by Councillor Hender. Do you wish to speak to the matter, Councillor Rabia? Okay. Councillor Hender, do you wish to speak to the matter? Members, do I have any questions, queries to debate? Councillor Clarehan? Yes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, I just wanted to um, extend my congratulations um, to Auntie Yvonne Agus uh, for her work as chair with the Reconciliation Committee. Uh, and in particular, I wanted to um, raise the, raise the uh, I suppose, major achievement in that um, the um, Reconciliation Committee and Administration have actually achieved 27 of the 31 actions in the Reconciliation Action Plan, uh, which is no mean feat. And of four, the four that haven't been achieved, three of those are actually, actually relate to a place of reflection. And interestingly, this is currently being worked on and the committee and council have just received a grant of $100,000 from the state government's Department of Aboriginal Affairs and Reconciliation towards uh, progressing this work on a place of reflection. I might also add, Lord Mayor, that um, 50,000 has been also been received from the EPA um, for capturing Ghana stories um, from the parklands. So um, that is also wonderful news. And I understand that there's even further uh, work being undertaken to seek uh, funding from philanthropists, from, um, even some from overseas. Uh, so there may be further good news to come uh, later. But I also wanted to mention, Lord Mayor, very quickly that uh, Reconciliation Australia has actually approached Adelaide or the City of Adelaide and asked if they could use our community engagement strategy and process to be used elsewhere across Australia, given this one has been so effective and so successful and has succeeded in engaging with so many um, people. So I also wanted to congratulate um, Auntie Yvonne and the committee uh, on that major achievement. The one um, outstanding action, I think, from the reconciliation plan is the establishment of the Ghana Cultural Hub in Victoria Square. 
uh, we still need to um, pursue that issue. However, some of the other issues that have been flagged as of uh, requiring um, further interest would be the opportunities around tourism uh, and economic development in relation to the Ghana offering, uh, community capacity building, uh, and uh, and as I mentioned, there's, they're pursuing um, grant funding from elsewhere and overseas currently. So again, I think this is a fantastic achievement and our sincerest congratulations to Aunty Yvonne and to the Reconciliation Action uh, to the Reconciliation Committee and also our administration who have been there beside us all the way. So many thanks. Thank you and well said, Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Abiyad Summer. Members, before you devote, those in favour? Those against? We carry item 9.1. Members, I am now going to adjust the order of tonight's uh, uh, events in terms of our agenda. We have a number of um, uh, items in confidence which I'd like us to consider now because we have a number of consultants who are in the room with us this evening. So, members, what I'm going to need from you is three motions to exclude. I'm taking you now directly to item 17 on your agendas, which are motions to exclude from the public for item 18.1.1.2 and point three. Councillor Rabiad? So you're moving 18.1.1. Can I have a second to move into confidence? Councillor Hender, those in favour? Those against, we carry. Can I have a mover, please, for 18.1.2? Councillor Hender, seconded by Councillor Aviad. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. Item 18.1.3, can I have a mover, please, members? Councillor Hender, seconded by Councillor Slama. Those in favour? We carry. So, members, we now have three items which will move into confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are not related, so to speak, to items 18.1, Point one, point two, or point three. Can I please ask you to leave the chamber? Not at this point in time, Councillor.
All right, members, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are now back in public. Uh, members, I'll continue on with our agenda, which will now take you on to item 10. Members, I have laid on your table a copy of my presiding member's report, so as opposed to reading it, would you like to take it as read? Oh, it's excellent. Okay, thank you. Well, well read, Councillor Martin. <laughs> the only thing I would like to illustrate from that report, members, is that we congratulate Councillor Priscilla Corbell Moore Yay. on her wedding. Congratulations, Councillor. Well done. <laughs> That is the most important item on the Lord Mayor's presiding member's report. So members, can I please have, Councillor, would you like to move the moving of that, that report? Uh, well done. Can I have a seconder please? Councillor Wilkinson, members to the floor, those in favour. We carry item 10 on your agenda, which takes me to item 11 on your agenda, which is page five, which is your councillor's reports. Members, would you like to share anything with the council chamber regarding your council chamber reports? In absence of, can I have a mover, please? Councillor Moran is moving, seconded by Councillor Clarehan. I'll put it straight to the floor to adopt. Those in favour, those against, we're going to carry item 11. Members, item 12, I'm going to do item 12.1, 12.2 and 12.3 by exception, and I'll unblock those that you don't wish to discuss. Members, would you like to pull out any of those items, 12.1, 12 12.2 12 or 12.3? 12 Councillor Martin, members, none others, which means I'm going to look for a mover for item 12.1 and 12.3. Councillor Milani, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. So, members, we've just carried items 12.1 and 12.3. Councillor Martin, item 12.2, would you like to move as printed? What would you like to do? A variation, Lord Mayor. Certainly. Uh, and that is. Um, one, two, and three as printed. And um, I have circulated to members very, very late, just before six, um, for a proof the option of advising customers of outstanding expiations prior to the reminder notice being issued and additional reminder fees being added to the total amount outstanding as outlined in attachment D on the agenda for the meeting of the council held on 12 December 2017 and then the old four and five become five and six. Now, councillors, you've got this on your screen. Councillor Martin, can you please confirm that what you've just read out is accurately reflected on the screen in front of you for the benefit of your fellow elected members, please? Yes, that is right. That is correct. Yep. So your seconder was Councillor Moran. Is that yep. correct? Would you like to... Have you spoken to the matter or would you like to speak to the matter? I'd like to speak to the matter. Okay. So uh, the floor is yours and then we'll go to you. your seconder. Um, uh, look, Lord Mayor, um, this uh, motion as is printed is um, way short of uh, the motion that was introduced on March 14th uh, this year, unanimously then I think, which asked the administration to review on-street parking fines so first and repeat offenders could be identified with the intention of letting off first-time offenders. Now the administration says in respect of overstaying parking limits or not displaying parking uh, tickets, it, it, it is technologically impossible to, uh, to do that. Um, 
All we can do as their recommendation proposes is give people who commit parking offences for which a knowledge of the road rules is uh, uh, required, but there is no signage such as where somebody parks at uh, parallel when they're supposed to be parking in a, an angle spot, uh, or alternatively that uh, uh, they're parking too close to the curb or whatever, all we can do is let them off. Now, that's good as it stands, that's really good. Um, uh, it's good also that the administration is proposing a two-week extension to when someone uh, who has a ticket has to uh, get those extra fees. Um, that's a really good measure, but I'm proposing that we go further and do something uh, really meaningful, meaningful rather, not meaningful, that's what we are, meaningful, and that is to send, as is recommended by the administration at D on page 82, send people a courtesy letter at the time when the extra fees would have kicked in to say, look, as a courtesy, we're letting you know that you haven't paid by the due date and you still have 14 days or 10 days or whatever it may be because of postage uh, or um, whatever the agreed period is, that um, they've got some warning. Now, uh, that is a real change and unless you adopt that, there is no discernible change, except for someone who parks parallel in an angle park or, or whatever. This is actually closer to what Councillor Moran was proposing. Um, now, a compassionate council sending a letter to a ratepayer saying, look, you forgot to pay, the due date has passed, but you've got a couple of weeks, is a really good message to send to the community. Uh, the downside is that the administration says it's going to cost um, uh, our um, uh, treasury uh, $1.6 million a year. Now, I know that seems a lot, but uh, frankly, um, that money is acquired by sending people no notice, simply sending them the extra fine for having forgotten it. Uh, and let me tell you, Lord Mayor, for getting a parking, a parking ticket is something that all of us do. I've done it. Uh, uh, my children have made a career out of it. It is something that is quite common. Now, I say, uh, can I just have one moment, Lord Mayor? Members. Be 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Thank yes, you. You've got it. Thank you. This is not um, uh, a proposal for the faint hearted. I accept that some people won't be happy about it. But look, if you're going to do something with the parking ticket system, let's not tinker about the edges. Let's do something meaningful that ratepayers can see and will approve of. Otherwise, it's pointless. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Your second was Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran? I reserve my right. Reserving your right. And I saw a show of hands to this side. Was it Councillor Wilkinson or Councillor Hender? Councillor Hender? But, Mayor, I, I won't support the additional. Um, no, is this an amendment or is this a, an alternate motion? Alternate motion. Alternate motion. So I won't support the alternate motion and I foreshadow that if this doesn't get up, I'll move the original motion as printed. Um, and the reason I won't support, well, in fact, there are 1.6 million dollars, 6 million reasons why I won't support it. Um, I, I just think it's too big a price to pay. I personally am quite happy with the current parking arrangements. I do believe if you come and you park in the city and you overstay, therefore denying somebody else the, the opportunity to park in the city, that you will, you know, and you're fine for that, then so be it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Um, so I, I don't have a strong feeling that we need to change our arrangements, but I accept that the recommendations that have been made do make it easier and do make us a more welcoming city, but I just don't think we should be knocking $1.6 million out of our budget at a time when we're trying to do some very significant things. Uh, we've had a couple of meetings in recent times where we've made some very significant decisions that had significant dollar signs attached to them. I think we need to be mindful of our, our Treasury position uh, and therefore I can't support the motion as it currently stands. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Councillor Moran, you flagged uh, reserve your right. You'd like to speak now? I would. The floor is yours. Uh, yes. Look, I just want to speak um, obviously strongly for this. This is a sort of measure, one of the rust measures I'm, I was unanimously um, supported when I said it in the very first one. The um, parking fines earn us an enormous amount of money. To knock a little bit off that, to be a courteous council, um, I would rather we earn nothing from the fines. I would rather we spent all the fine money, lowering it, and then spend it 
um, on such initiatives as, as Phil's outlined. The attitude, if you don't like it, don't do it, will, will be interpreted as if you don't like it, don't come into the city. Um, having been on council now for a long time, it has never wavered until the last six to 12 months that people that get a fine and then it sneaks up on them, and it's not a, it's not a huge criminal act going, I think the average time is eight minutes or something over, so it's not like the turnover of the city isn't happening. But it's not the getting of the fine, it's the lack of compassion. When you get a fine that you deserve, you know, you take it on the chin a bit. But when there's been a reason or um, the rapid escalation of the fine that takes people by surprise, that is when you get people in trouble paying it um, and quite outraged with, um, with the whole process. Recently, our administration has really listened to the councillors who have asked for long and hard to have a more compassionate, polite um, way that they deal with um, fines, and that's, work, that's worked very well. But um, I think we need to extend that and keep moving on it because it, it makes us, it is the one thing that makes us very unwelcoming. That buys us $1 million plus of goodwill and a, a good feeling about coming to the city. The non I think it's money well spent. I mean, considering some of the money we're considering spending on things, it, it beggars belief that we would, we would j uh, j you know, jive at doing this. Um, this is something we all signed up to. Soon we'll be able to adjust the parking fine amount down a little bit. But a polite letter to remind somebody who's obviously forgotten um, is, is just a, a courtesy. They do it in other cities and it, will, it reaps rewards in goodwill. Whereas the, here you now own, uh, owe $390, um, reaps a black bitter harvest. And Megan has always been consistent. She wants to pay bigger rates and she wants more parking fines. Well, she she's, have a right to do that, but that, that is not what most people, the ratepayers, think. They want us to have a compassionate um, service to them, to remind them when they have to pay fines and they don't want to pay too many rates. So I don't think this is a large amount to buy us a lot of, a lot of goodwill, a lot of good publicity and a lot of uh, a shift in a terrible way that in the past councils have dealt with parking fines. On the bill, Councillor Council Moran. Uh, I've got Councillor Antic, followed by the Deputy Lord Mayor, followed by Councillor Malani. Councillor Antic. Uh, yeah, Lord Mayor, I don't want to talk very quickly. I, I'm not going to support this. I'm, I'm entirely sympathetic to trying to make it easier for people to come into the city. Um, but, um, you know, there's a huge cost associated with it. I think um, Claire and Vanessa and the team have done a great job um, getting the balance right. And, uh, I, I mean, I'm actually more concerned about um, the state and the flow of the traffic, as you know, rather than uh, you know, whether or not we write to people to tell them they've already got a fine and there'll be another additional fee. I think the boat's sailed by then. People are going to come in, they're going to come in, and there are many other things that we can do, including uh, keeping the traffic flowing and keeping spaces available which are more relevant, in my view. So, I, I mean, you know, I see what you know, Councillor Martin's trying to achieve, but I, I think I, I like the balance where it is and I want to support it. Deputy Lord Mayor, followed by Councillor Malani. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I actually do think that, uh, again, I just echo what Councillor Antic said, that the team are doing very well and also I have been waiving um, fines on compassionate grounds and are, are working through that exceptionally well. Um, I don't think uh, the uh, rapid escalation is going to uh, stop people from getting parking fines and we're already at delaying it. I, I won't be voting for this. Um, I would rather we look at uh, reduce, reducing our council rates and then you know, chopping another $1.6 million out of our budget and trying to find that somewhere else. Um, there is plenty of parking um, and just imagine how uncongested our city would be if we had proper cycling infrastructure and everybody started <laughs> using their bikes. <laughs> Wise words, do you, Lena? Yeah. Councillor Maloney. Sorry. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I just got a, a, a question, really. I mean, um, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater with this because I think, if I'm correct, we all support option one and two, but maybe I'm, I'm wrong. I just want to make sure people know what they're actually voting for. 
Um, I guess it's, it's the addition of option three, which may be the contentious one, but um, that's up to everyone else to work out. But I guess uh, my question is, um, option three to that you've added, um, Councillor Martin. Um, that's option four, Councillor Maloney. Paragraph four. Paragraph four. Four. That's right. Paragraph four. Four. Option three. It's not option four. That's a four million dollar exercise. So let's be clear. But the option three, to me, you've got. A, um, it's actually only. I was originally not going to support option three, but this question, how you answer it, may dictate. It's actually between two and two hundred and fifty or two hundred forty-six thousand for you to implement. The impact of the budget is then an additional sort of 899 to 1.3. But if we've got option one and two in place anyway, isn't that going to impact actually how many reminders there'll be from option three in the beginning? Because we won't be issuing as many fines. We'll be issuing more warnings and fines. No, no, no. Yeah. Technically, we will be. Yeah, you're right. I, I, that is correct. So the impact isn't that high, or is that where 899 has been factored in? Thanks, Minister. Um, through the presiding member, if if council chose to adopt option three, essentially option one would be redundant because option three would be sending courtesy letters instead of just delaying the reminder notices. So you actually wouldn't need both option one and option three. Yeah, um, that's why I was trying to understand the correlation. So, albeit, that, I don't think it matters to the motion really, but option one and option two in place will then actually reduce the fi financial impact of option three because there will be less fines to remind people about. Through the chair, it would really only be by the number of um, warnings that were issued via option two, which um, is about 2,000 expiations a year. So the, the number of expiations that you would be then sending courtesy letters for wouldn't be significantly reduced. Correct, because we're not issuing fines, we're issuing warnings in the first place. So, um, Sorry, if I can, if I can just clarify that, we you would we would only be issuing warnings for approximately two and a half thousand expiations a year. Yeah, so the exactly. number of um, courtesy letters that you're sending out would not be significantly reduced. Correct. That's what isn't that what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. But my, so my question is, then the budget impact, based on what you just said, then is it? Have you factored that into these numbers? That's the no. That's the budget impact based on the number of expiations. Uh -huh. so yes. The so budget impact potentially is less than than what it says here. It could the be reduced by two thousand expiations yeah. times that by fifty dollars. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's not too much. Well, anyway. Um, well, look, I, I definitely support option one and two. And I guess for those that want to, I guess those that have spoken against this, I hope we are all sort of in favour of one and two. It's, it's option three, I think we're truly debating here. My, my just follow-up question is, uh, yeah, so it's option three we're debating here, adding that in. So my question is, if we give option three a go, will you bring back a report that, that gives us an in indication of how, if we trial this, so let's say, Six months. Will will something come back to us? CEO, through the Yes. This is going to take seven to nine months to implement. Um, the intention, it's to me a direction of council, a directive, I should say. So we wouldn't be providing a report. The alternative is for you to ask us for a report and delay implementation. But um, as it stands at the moment, it will be a directive when you take... The irony is by the time we implement it, we'll hopefully be working on smart parking anyway, which will counteract all of this. So, look, I, I'm willing to give it a go, a go actually, I have to say. All right, we got there. Thank you, Councillor Maloney. So, who else have we got? We've got Councillor Slammer, Councillor Clarehan. I think Councillor Slammer may have had his hand up earlier, then I'll go to Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Slammer.
I'm trying to get talked out of not supporting it here, but I will because I made my mind up. Sorry, um, I will support this. So I, I look at it a bit differently. I think this, this is a good amendment, uh, Councillor Martin, because there's an, another option to contact the customer before all goes wrong. And let's not look at that as a as a negative or as a liability. It's a contact point with the customers. You know, at the bank, we love contacting customers to sell them something or or promote something else as an option, I think, in our department to not just send, hey, you owe us X amount in expiations. How about consider central market or, you know, use it as a marketing opportunity to, to drive other communication to customers. So I quite like it. Thank you, Councillor Slummer. So I'm now going to Councillor Clarehan and Councillor Wilkinson. Just a, a question, is administration aware of the processes that other metropolitan councils undertake? Is there much in terms of variety of responses to people who are issued with tickets? Do some of them give them longer periods to pay than other councils? I'll take that as a question. See you, Vanessa, thanks. Um, through the Chair, my understanding is that most metropolitan councils take a fairly kind of vanilla approach to issuing expiations and reminder notices. I'm not aware of too many variations on the theme, but we can take that away and, and look at it. State government set, sets the amount, that's right, but in terms of but the... in terms of um, how long people have to pay, that, that's set by state that's government as well. Yeah. And my understanding is that most um, other metropolitan councils actually send their reminder notices at the 28 days, so immediately after the expiation is due. We currently give a couple of days grace already, um, so we're not required to send that notice exactly on 28 days, but many do, so we currently give two days grace on that already. So option one was about um, proposing an additional 14 days. Yeah, and I'm totally supportive of that, but I just think we have to be very careful that um, we're not just making a rod where what, uh, metropolitan councils have one system and then we introduce another. And we're already giving, offering 14 days extra. So, I mean, what a, a reminder notice, really? They've still got to pay the fine. Um, we're already improving on other councils. I think this is a bit of a Clayton's number, this one, because they've still got to pay the fine. We just want to spend a million and a half dollars to remind people that they've got to pay the fine. And I just think, to me, that's a total waste of money. So I'm sorry, but I, I just won't be supporting this. I think we're better off spending money on better signage or other ways of avoiding, uh, allowing people to understand uh, the meaning of our signage rather than just giving them extra time to pay or a courtesy note. I think that's very confusing on our part. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. You want to put this motion, Councillor Rand? The motion. It's, t it's 25 2. We've got yes, 25 past. Oh, Councillor, you can't because you're the seconder of the motion. Councillor, because you seconded the motion, you can't put it. Somebody else could. Now, Councillor Wilkinson, would you like to speak this matter? You had your hand up. Um, yeah, I'm somewhat vexed with this because I'd like to see us reducing our cost of on street parking where people are not using our on street parking and using some of our budget for that. And I sort of feel that our uh, recommendation as put is already sort of going far enough. Um, I think I'm prepared to entertain this to try it out. And uh, if it's done on the basis that the letters sent to people said, thank you for shopping in the city, ordinarily you would have received a, a, a additional penalty at this junction, but, but we thank you for shopping in the city, whatever, and, and uh, we, we're giving you uh, just a reminder instead uh, to, I think, please be careful next time you're parking or something. So we use some marketing and following what councillors have done. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. I don't see any further hands, members. I'm taking you back to your mover, Councillor Martin, to sum up. Look, very quickly to the administration. When a, a, a fine has gone past the due date and the person incurred the fine is advised of that, does the fine escalate? 
Through the chair, yes, it does. It does, yes. So can I just explain to everyone again, if you receive a fine, you pay the fine. The effect of this proposal is that instead of the reminder with a fine that comes at the moment you've gone past the due date, it is a courtesy letter that says you have incurred this fine, we're not going to escalate it, we're going to give you a chance to pay it within the next 7, 10, 14 days. It is a courtesy letter designed to curry good favour. It seems quite sensible to me and straightforward um, and my intention is simply to see if uh, uh, my colleagues will support it. If they don't, that's fine, but it seems to me to be entirely appropriate. Members, you have a motion before you. Those in favour? Those against? I cast in favour. Members, motion carried. Members, I take you on to the next item, which is 12.4 members, electric vehicle charging stations. Deputy Lord Mayor, you've got your hand up. Um, I'd like to put forward an alternate motion, Lord Mayor. Is uh, on the screen. Uh, the main the main difference to the mass speaker. Yes. Do I have a second? Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Slammer um, is your seconder. Uh, just looking at the at the, the report and the locations, um, I think that the locations for the on-street EV charging stations need to be a lot more highly visible, visible um, and in the parts of the city that are visited more often. Um, sort of, I, I, I do understand that these particular locations um, were also uh, in consideration and I believe that um, and they've all been supported through uh, consultation. Um, they are supported. The Central Market Precinct is already serviced by an EV charging station that has been installed with bus station and I understand these have been quite popular as well. Um, but I really do think that we need highly visible sites so that we can encourage others to uh, by purchase and use the EVs um, and know that there is very obvious on-street locations for them to use if they need to recharge. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Slumber, you seconded the, uh, we'll call it the alternate motion. I'm happy with that, Lord Mayor. Not much more to add except just a quick question. I couldn't see anywhere in the report that reflected any potential revenue from the sale of electricity. I could see a loss of car parking revenue in, in all those spots, but I couldn't see any revenue coming back from the proposed 20 cents per kilowatt hour, whatever it was. Is, is there a report coming on that? CEO. Michelle, thanks. Um, uh, through uh, the chair, are uh, the three uh, sites that administration has recommended have uh, two of those sites have no lost revenue because there aren't fees for parking there currently, and the other one, if you look at the the uh, matrix in the attachment, is quite minimal in under sort of three thousand dollars per annum. That's that's on the basis of no one using the car park. Of course, if you've got people um, coming in and parking and actually charging, they would have that first hour for free, but then they would pay the local parking fees. So that's a maximum um, potential loss revenue. Uh, the, the sites that have had um, the amendment put up have an increased potential for lost revenue, and you can see that in the matrix that is two of those sites is um, higher under uh, 10000 and under $20,000 potential lost revenue. Uh, in terms of um, the question about income from um, uh, electricity, uh, the charging costs that you have for you cover the costs of charging uh, that the council would pay um, and the $0.30 cent would uh, cover a little more than that as well. So, so there's been no modelling down in terms of um, profit, you know, potential profit revenue um, out of each car park. Well, if we were to roll it out in the future over more sites, what could that look like in terms of revenue generated from on selling electricity? See so, um, you. Yeah. 
sorry, through the chair. We haven't had any specific modelling done in relation to the potential um, increase of revenue at the moment. The fees that we've got proposed um, that are before you are to cover the cost um, of our electricity. Um, Thank you, Councillor Starmer. Councillor Antic. Um, just want to start by asking a question. Do we have any um, figures or statistics at this stage of the, the, the use of the um, EV charging station in uh, uh, the bus station? Are there any figures available? So, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Uh, through the Chair, uh, we do um, actually have some figures of both November and December. Uh, in um, November we had um, 188 uh, individual sessions of charging there just for Council's um, charging stations, not the Tesla charging uh, on the same site. Um, in December uh, already the, the statistics we've got is 81 sessions as well. Uh, in addition to that we've had uh, feedback from um, adjoining businesses that have um, noticed an increase in um, uh, people frequenting uh, their facilities. Thank you. Uh, just a follow-up question if I could, sorry, to, I know everyone's hungry. Um, but uh, uh, I, I mean, are there any stats on whether or not they are Different vehicles, or the same vehicle, or um, yeah. Um, yes, no, a general question. Uh, through the chair, um, I don't have those um, before me in terms of how many different vehicles they are, but I believe that we will be able, we would be able to come back and um, provide that information to elected mem members, perhaps through an e-news. And just one final question. Are you aware of the owner of the station of vehicle which ends in BSH? Because uh, I work not far from there and that seems to be the only vehicle that ever uses the space, um, aside from the Tesla showroom. So uh, just just that's I mean as to whether or not there's any just figures involved in that. Sorry, that's my last question. Then I just want to speak to the briefly. See you. Just got to be clear, it's all about transparency. Or maybe you can't really respond to that question. No, okay, that's fine. Look, um, I just just quickly, I, I, obviously, I'm going to speak against this because of all of the projects we've kicked off uh, in this council term, and there have been some good ones, I might say, but there have also been some pretty frivolous ones. I think this one probably takes the cake. This one, this one out does the uh, the green wall and uh, you know all sorts of other reckless spending that we've put in. Um, this one, to me, makes no sense. Um, we are not in the process of uh, putting in fueling stations of any sort, um, or we'll be putting in um, diesel powered car filling up stations. So I don't understand this one, never have, never will, uh, and I am staggered by those figures. I would be surprised if I see more than one person there every two days. And I can see it from my office window, and I look. Um, because you know, uh, in between, well, <laughs> do some work. Um, well, I could do that, but I'm so distracted by the flurry of activity in the bus station. So, anyway, um, I won't be supporting this, obviously, uh, and uh, I just lament this project and I lament the fact that it, it passed this chamber, and uh, anyway, that's all right. Councillor Marty. Just a quick question Council about the location because um, the attachment C sent three. Uh, locations as per the recommendation, but then the three locations that Deputy Lord Mayor has put in are three non recommended locations. Right. One I just was recommended and there was two changes. So I just, I'm just curious is the, the, the not 41 High Marsh not recommended and the 64 72 Light Square? Yeah, admin comment on that. Um, CEO, thanks, Michelle. Um, through the chair, so the nine locations that um, we went out for consultation on, um, we uh, worked in consultation with our parking control people, um, our transport strategy people, and the sustainability program. We're all supportive of all nine sites. Um, it's just that when we looked at which ones we, we um, thought we ought to prioritise, um, you'll see through that matrix that we landed on those first three. Um, that, that obviously depends on what your preference is. If you look at the attachment A and the community's preference, they actually came up with 103 Sturt Street, High Mush Square and Light Square as their top three. So it's a matter of judgment out. Can you sum up? Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Councillor Mahoney. 
Um, I think uh, when there was discussion about you know the, the loss of revenue and stuff like that, there was talk about sort of cost of parking charges or something. And one location I said that we don't charge to park in that location, therefore there's no loss of revenue. But you know the first hour, the actual charge for the electricity is is twenty cents. First hour free, and then only twenty cents including GST thereafter. And if I was one of the people, if I could afford a forty, sixty thousand dollar electric car, I would not charge my car at home. I would go to that same spot that Council Antic was referred to, and I would fill it up on council ratepayers' um, charge every day. And and I'd be one of the few people that could. So I'm happy to support it at this time, but. In, and I understand we're trying to do it as a promotional thing, but I can see people abusing the um, thing. It's the same car in the same car park every time. You know, that um, we should be charging. Um, it, we should, we should. There should be some dividend for the ratepayer. We're providing a service. You know, we charge people plenty to park in the city. We've got no chance, no crimes about charging people a fortune to park in Sturt Street. So people don't, don't park there because we charge so much. Yet we're giving this away for. for, for uh, Reduced to people who can afford a, a very expensive electric car. So um, I don't think it's going to make the difference between people coming into the city. I think people would come into the city anyway, we just park there for, for free for subsidised electricity. So um, I'm only supporting it on the basis that we looked at, at charging full commercial things once this thing is up and running. So it's not a drain on the right house. Members, yeah, before I hand you back to the DLM, I'm just going to share smart green, livable, creative. And the uh, would someone be able to answer how many on-street car parks there are in the City of Adelaide in total? Um, through the Chair, I understand there's in the order of 40,000 car parks. So we're talking about a quantum, I understand, of six? Yes. Thank you. My case in point, members. If you're going to have six on-street electric vehicle charging areas, surely you'd want them to have high demonstration and high educational value. And I would suggest that the uh, motion from the DLM, which suggests that Hymar Square, Light Square and Jerningham Street gives a good example of all three. Also, members, it's often business people who are driving electric vehicles at this point in time. I'm sure they will become more commonplace over time. But it is business people. And these locations, which are being suggested by the DLM, are very conducive towards people doing business in the City of Adelaide to bring their vehicle in to charge it while they're in a business meeting. So I'll leave you with that thought. DLM, sum up. I believe you just summed up for me, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? We carry division call. Judy? Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise. <laughs> Councillor Maloney, <laughs> Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Hendon, Councillor Slammer, Councillor Paul Belmore, Councillor Martin, Councillor Clarahan, and Deputy Lord Mayor. Motion carried, motion declared. Members, I take you directly to item 12.5. Community consultation feedback for community open, open space to adopt and approve. Do I have a mover? Councillor Moran, seconded by the DLM. Councillor Moran, I presume your moving is printed. DLM, would you like to speak to it, Councillor Moran? DLM, members, do I have any debate? Excuse me, members. Okay. Members, I've got a sum up in front of me, so I'm going to put it directly before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry that item, which is item 12.5. Item 12.6 has been withdrawn from your papers, members, so we will move on. Members, item 12.7, 12.8 and 12.9, I'm going to put to you on the exception rule. Do you want to draw out any of those items for debate? 12.7, Councillor Antic? So I have, so members, 12.8 and 12.9, given that you don't want to debate those items, could I have a mover to adopt them on block? Councillor Wilkinson, seconded by Councillor Clarehan. No debate members, so I put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? We are carrying items 12.8 and 12.9, which takes us back to item 12.7. Councillor Antic. I don't want to move it longer. I want to ask a quick question and then that will determine. Um, can we just have clarification as to how many car parks are down there? 
think it's three. CEO, Tom McCready. Food presiding member, I've been advised it's about seven to eight car parking spaces. Um, well, thank you. And um, I don't think I need to speak to that. I don't want to sell that and give away seven car parking spots. So I'll oppose the motion. That's all right. Which means I don't have a motion at this point in time because I don't have a mover because you just asked a question. So, members, do I have a mover with regards to that item? Which of Yes, Councillor. Because my children attend Pulpen Grammar School, but I'm part of a large class of people, I consider so. Okay, and what are you doing as a consequence of that? You're staying? I'll stay and move Okay, that's your decision. Thank you. Okay, so members, we've got 12.5. Councillor Milani. I'll move it. You're moving as printed. Do we have a seconder for a moving as printed? Councillor Hender. Councillor Milani, would you wish to debate? Is that my right, Lord Mayor? Councillor Hender. Right. Members, I'm looking to you. Uh, look, Lord Mayor, just for the record, I'll uh, be voting with Councillor Anting against this motion. Uh, not only is there the issue of the loss of car spaces, but the street's gone forever. And whether Pulteney's there in 100 years or not, the street could be if the council didn't sell it. Uh, I have a, a, a different view to everyone else about selling off streets. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, you wish to speak to this matter? Yes, I, I agree. I think the principle's wrong. Um, we are trying to World Heritage List Colonel Light's um, grid pattern, and yet we're selling off streets that will was, was then cease to be streets. So I'll be voting against it. Members, I'm looking at you, Councillor Corbyn Moore. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm the same for the reasons as, as have already been stated. I will not be supporting it. Members, do I have any further debate? I don't see any hands, so I'm going to go back to Councillor Milani to sum up. Excellent. <laughs> um, look, I, uh, to be honest, um, I guess my fellow elected members are basically points over there. Can we, def can we defer it? Is there a... Yeah, just, just put it, Natasha, and do it. It's going to lose. Yeah, it's going to be too late um, to defer it. All right, I'll have nothing further to say. Right, members, you've now got a recommendation which has become a motion before you as printed. Those in favour? Members, I need to see your hands. What are you doing? Those in favour? Those against? So did everybody vote? Councillor Wilkinson didn't. Judy, can you Okay, it's 4 5, the matter is lost. Thank you, councillors. Members, I am now going to take you to items 2.8. Sorry, my mistake. Judy, where are we? Thank you. Okay, 12.10. Now, members, 12.10 is about our meeting schedule, as you are aware. If you could please turn your attention, please, to members, page 158 of your papers. We have got two parts here. You have a recommendation before you, which you could look at as a procedural motion, but then I would need to look to you 
for the appointment of um, presiding members and deputy presiding members for two committees. I'm happy to move the procedural motion. Okay, could I have a second please? Councillor Martin, no debate on what's being put before you because the next step I will do, because of course what you're doing is you're approving the draft meeting schedule, you are approving to maintain the current meeting arrangements at least for Q1 of the first quarter of next calendar year, and you're approving a workshop. So that's what you're doing in your procedural motion. You can ask a question? Yes, you can. I'm just wondering whether any of the other councillors have got any appetite for us meeting on a regular at a regular time. We meet at, at 5.30 for on one Tuesday and we meet at 6 o'clock for the next Tuesday. No, I, just, I wondered, I think we used to always meet at, at 5.30 and I don't quite know how it is. No, it's gone back. Councillor, can I suggest that that's probably what we'll tackle in the workshop? Oh, okay. Those and other matters. Can I respectfully share that with you? Because that's the idea of the workshop, to sort out all those operational logistics. So members, I've got a procedural motion from Councillor Moran. I'm gonna put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? We're carrying that. Now, members, what I now need from you is that I need a presiding member and a deputy presiding member for the committee for a period of three months. So Councillor Moran, you had your hand up first, followed by Councillor Martin. What would you wish to do? <laughs> I'll just stand on the councillor there. Councillor, I, I, I still like the, the system I had before. That's um, Councillor, I need you to I follow this. I need you to follow this system. At the moment, it's the Lord Mayor system. So, effectively, can we have a suggestion or a nomination for a presiding member, please, to start for the committee? Okay, I'm happy to workshop this. So, can we just? I just need oh, a nomination. Okay. I don't need okay. a workshop. We're having a workshop. You've just voted to have one. No, I know. I'm just going to make it up as a go. Someone's got to. But you're not on the floor. Councillor, I need you to nominate somebody, please. I've nominated Councillor Claire Hand. Okay. Councillor Claire Hand, do you accept if nominated successfully? Thank you. Well, we've got to nominate four people, is that right? No. 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 We're doing this in pieces. So we are first looking for the presiding member for the committee for a three month period. So we have Councillor Clarehan. Members, do I have any further nominees? Mm -hmm. DLM, are you nominating someone else? Uh, I'll nominate Councillor Moran and Councillor Hendon. No, uh, it's just the one, one, one. Thing, one. Councillor okay. Moran. Councillor Moran, so you are... Councillor Moran, do you accept if nominated? Um, can, can I just check what we're doing now? We're okay. just going to members, by Martin. Okay, now what we're doing. We have two committees. We have the committee, and we also have the Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee for a period of three months, members. This is a carryover. Do you remember our last meeting where we discussed that we would need to have a workshop to iron this all out? Yes, what so I'm sorry doing, about that. We need a, a chair and a, a deputy for two for committees. That's four people. That is correct. Yeah, so good. Yes. Thanks. I was right. Four no, people. That, that is correct. Four people over two committees. You're precisely right. So let's deal with the presiding member's role of the committee first. We I'm have to nominate for the other committee chair. Yeah. So you're not you're not saying yes. You're, so you're saying no to the committee. Do I have any further nominations for the committee? Because at the moment I have Councillor Clarehan as nominated by Councillor. <laughs> okay. Are we just doing one period? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Because there is a pecuniary interest in this, so I do need the members. Yes, there is. So I need the committee chair, the presiding member, to leave the chamber. I don't have any further nominations. I don't see any hands. I'm going to take this as the only nomination. Okay, members, can I please have a mover and a seconder to nominate Councillor Clarehan? Moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Maloney. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Can we invite Councillor Clarehan back into the chamber, please? We will do this quickly, members. Welcome back and congratulations, Councillor Clarehan. Members, I'm now looking for a nomination for a deputy presiding member for the same organisation, which is the committee, for a three month period. Councillor Wilkinson, you are nominating whom? No, I decline. Thank you. Two great nominations. Any further nominees, please, councillors? We need someone. It's a three month period. You may not even be in the chair. Nominate Councillor for sure. Oh, okay. Deputy Lord Mayor. Okay, thank you. Now I understand there is uh, this is a non-renumerated position, so you do not need to leave the chamber. I've been advised. 
So, do I have any further nominations or nominees? I don't. So, Councillor Vershaw has accepted. So now I need a mover. Moved by Councillor Mulaney, seconded by Councillor Hendon. No further debate. Those in favour? Those against? Congratulations, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, we now move on to the Strategic Planning and Development and Policy Committee. I need a presiding member. Do I have a, do I have a nom nomination? No, Councillor Mulaney? No, 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 Councillor Moran, do you accept if nominated? Yes. You do? Do I have any further nominations? I don't. Councillor Moran, can you please leave the chamber? Members, can I please have a mover? Move for Councillor Hander, seconded by Councillor Clarehan. I'll put it to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. We can invite Councillor Moran back in. Congratulations, Councillor Moran. Members, we now need a Deputy Presiding Member for the Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee. Can I have a nomination? Councillor Martin? Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Wilkinson, do you accept if nominated? Thank you. Do I have any further nominees? I don't, so we'll put that straight. I need a mover. Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Clearham. I put that before you, members. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. We have dealt with that item, members. Well done. Members, there are no emerging key risks. I'm going to take you directly to item 13.1. Councillor Martin, question on notice, page 173. I've been told it's in my papers. We will find it. Okay, Councillor Martin, can I presume that we will take your question as read? Uh, yeah. Is that in the papers? I will read the answer. Thank you. The answer to the, your question, your three-part question, Councillor Martin, is the response to these questions will be included in a report on this matter to be presented to Council at its meeting to be held on the 30th of January 2018. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, uh, the next question on notice is from Councillor Martin, and it's page 22 of your papers, it's item 13.2. Councillor Martin, we'll take your question as read. There is a seven-part answer. Members, do you have this before you? Yes. You do. Would you like to take this as read in the interest of time? Yes. You would? Members, we'll take that as read. Thank you, Judy. Members, that has now dealt with questions on notice, so we now move to motions without notice. Do I have any? I don't. What was that? Oh, my mistake. Sorry, I am leaping ahead, am I? Questions without notice. Do I have any questions without notice? Councillor Clearan, you've got a question without notice. The floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, we ha I've had a complaint from uh, someone who works at the university about um, some of the preachers who are breaching their conditions by pursuing people down the street uh, rather than, uh, I think, is agreeing with the terms uh, that they are able to present, in, offer information or give it, but not to pursue anyone. And I would just like to ask administration uh, in relation to compliance if they have any update on this matter that's been raised, given um, especially a lot of the international students are quite vulnerable. Um, and I think uh, we need to be mindful of that. See you. Yeah, thanks, Claire. Uh, through the presiding member, um, since this was brought to my attention at the weekend, um, I've asked for a detailed update from the relevant staff in terms of ensuring compliance with the permit. I'm still waiting to get that information. Once I have that, I will distribute it to um, all council members. Thank you, Councillor Clearham. Members, do I have any further questions without notice? I don't see any hands, so I'm going to take you on to motions on notice, item 15.1, Councillor Moran, motion on notice, page 175 of your papers. Councillor Moran. Uh, I move, um, move as Pritchard, and I'm happy to go straight to the vote. It's a straightforward request for a report. If you don't want that report, vote against it. I'm not going to talk you into it. You will need but a seconder. <laughs> Do we have a seconder, Councillor Antic? So, members, I don't see any debate, so I'm going to put it back to you, Councillor Moran, to sum up. Somebody. Members, I'm going to put this directly before you. Those in favour? Can I see your hands, members, please? Those in favour? Those against? Those against? Can I just see that again, please, members? Is it? 
Carried 5-4, members. Carried in favour. A, re a report will come back. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, I now go to 15.2, the Deputy Lord Mayor, motion on notice regarding Victoria Square, Tartan Younger, DLM. I will take this read, Lord Mayor. Can I look for a seconder, please? Councillor Moran, DLM, you wish to speak to it in any capacity? Uh, no. no. Members, any debate? <laughs> Councillor Wilkinson? A question of the mover. Um, in terms of a more permanent um, uh, solution, is the mover considering that some deciduous plane trees, not, not, not necessarily plane trees, but, trees, but some deciduous trees be planted to provide shade, or we're talking about built structure permanently? I'll enable that question. DLM, if you could answer Thank that for the benefit of your fellow members. Um, those of us that were around when Vic Square uh, came together, it, the original plan didn't have any trees. In fact, we put the trees in. Um, uh, look, I'm really looking for some temporary shade. Uh, the reason I put it through today is so that we can actually have some shade there over the summer. Um, the shade doesn't necessarily have to be on the hearth stand, it could be on the grass in front of the fountain, but it really is to allow families, particularly uh, with small children, to allow the children to actually play in the fountain without either burning their bottoms by sitting on the side or being so far away that they can't actually look after their kids. So um, in discussion with administration, there's all sorts of alternatives that we could use, but we're really looking for a temporary solution at this point with an investigation as to a more permanent solution might come through. Um, well, I'm happy to support the, uh, the motion. I would like to see us looking at putting some trees to provide you know, more substantial shade. It's, it's, it's events in favour of uh, at, in, at the expense of shade. So uh, I think we should look at where we can cancel some, some trees in there. Members, I've got debate. Councillor Clarehan. Just very quickly, totally support this. In fact, I think I have a motion, or I've certainly put a motion in the past for this on this matter, and as my understanding was that it was to be um, implemented. So good luck. He's hoping. It's very important. You watch young people, families there, and it is way too hot for them to be enjoying that space. We try to get them in, and then when they get there, it is just too hot. So totally support it. Members, do I have any further debate? DLM. No. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Now, members, I motions without notice. Do I have any? Well, may I have a motion without notice, but I do want to um, talk about the sad passing of Bob Ford today. Which Certainly, is, Councillor. Yeah, just, just to say that um, he'll be sadly missed. Thank you for sharing that with your fellow councillors, Councillor. Robert Ford, who um, was on Adelaide Crows Board, been a major um, significant contributor to tourism. He'll be missed. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further motions without notice? I don't. So, members, I'm going to declare this meeting closed at 7.57, three minutes ahead of schedule. Um, and I thank you for your participation. Ladies and gentlemen of the gallery, CEO and your team, thank you very much. Members, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you.